Hey guys, this is Chase from Fish Chase Flies, and today I'm going to show you how to tie an articulated carp fly. This articulated damsel nymph is the improved version of a fly I made called the bunny bug. It takes a bit more effort to tie than the average carp fly, but the end result is worth it. The foam tail helps keep the fly upright on the bottom, and the foam is wrapped in ostrichurl to keep the natural buggy look of the fly. A soft tackle body and bee chain eyes complete the look letting the fly enter the water without spooking the carp and having plenty of movement with just the slightest twitch. Here's a list of materials you need to tie this fly. A bobbin spooled with Vivas 140 denier power thread, some 0.45 millimeter beading wire, four millimeter black bead chain eyes, 30 pound American wire shark leader, two millimeter black foam for the tail and body, a regular rabbit zonker, my favorite carp hook is the Fulling Mills Bonio Carp Hook, size 8. A hen saddle or soft tackle feathers. And finally, some black ostrich hurl. An easy way to make the shank is to take the 30 pound shark wire and insert it into this loop forming tool. You want to bend the shank until there's a kink and then insert that kink down into the jaws of the tool around the little post. Slowly you want to squeeze the tool together until the wire is touching and then finally give it one last squeeze until the eye of the shank is formed. It should give you a perfect eye every time. The first step is to insert the shank into the vise. Next, cover the shank in a layer of thread. Once you have a decent layer of thread, take a small snippet of rabbit hair and attach it to the top with a couple loose wraps. Use your fingers to spin the fur all the way around the shank. Wrap down the rabbit fur until the tips are sticking out about half an inch. Next, cut off the excess rabbit and then wrap back towards the eye of the shank and give yourself a nice even body. Now, snip a piece of foam that's about an inch long and maybe an eighth of an inch wide. Attach the foam right at the base of the rabbit fur and give it a couple firm wraps. Now grab one strand of ostrich hurl and tie it down right in front of the foam. If you tie in the ostrich hurl before the foam, the ostrich hurl will slip off the back of the fly when you try to wrap it. Bring the foam down underneath the shank and then in front of the ostrich hurl and then to begin to wrap with touching wraps all the way to the front of the shank. Capture the foam just behind the eye of the shank. Snip or tear the excess foam off as cleanly as possible. Now take your ostrich hurl and begin wrapping towards the front of the fly with close but not touching wraps. Capture the ostrich at the front of the shank with your thread and then try to make as clean a head as possible. Usually I just tear the ostrich off. Add a whip finish to the front of the shank. Try to keep it as small and clean as possible because there's going to be no materials covering your wraps. Add some head cement to your whip finish. Insert the hook into your vise and lay down a thread base. If you're using the Fooling Mills Bonillo Carp Hook, it's Teflon coated so it's very slick. So you definitely want to add a very thick base before you start to add any of your bead chain eyes or other materials. Add your bead chain eyes at the front of the hook with just enough room to leap a whip finish in front. Use plenty of figure eight and locking wraps to make sure the bead chain eyes are secure. Snip about a one inch length of the beading wire and lash it down on the top of the hook. Wrap backwards down the shank to just about where the shank starts to curve. Attach the tail and then bend the wire over and lash it down with the thread again. Snip off the extra bit of wire, but be careful when you're wrapping over this part because it will be sharp. Once you finish wrapping the wire down, either flip your vise over or flip the hook in your vise. Snip a piece of foam that's about an inch long and a quarter of an inch wide. Capture the foam right at the back of the hook, as far towards the back as you can get, and then rotate the foam on top of the hook and tie it down. Tie in a soft tackle feather by the tip. Begin to wrap the feather forward with touching wraps until you get all the way behind the bead chain eyes. Capture the feather right behind the bead chain eyes. Tie it down with some tight wraps and then snip off the excess. Use a bodkin or your scissors to separate the fibers on top. This will let you lay the foam flat without capturing too many fibers. Lay the foam over and capture it with a few tight wraps right behind the bead chain eyes. 
Move your thread in front of the bead chain eyes, and then lay the foam over and capture it again. This will give you a spot to whip finish and to finish your fly off. Snip or tear the extra foam and then add your whip finish. Snip off your thread and then add some head cement. I like to add a little bit to the foam as well to increase the durability. Now you're done. Hope you enjoy the video and let me know if you catch any fish with this pattern.